Wrong. So there's a million and one things you can do wrong with a camera. I know I'm guilty of it. We asked our pros at B&H and they came up with a list of the ways we're using our cameras wrong. Holding your camera the wrong way. Most cameras are right-handed, leaving your left hand free to balance weight and control the lens. Supporting your camera and lens underneath improves balance, weight management, and stability. This can have a huge benefit, especially when shooting at slower shutter speeds. Not cleaning your lens. Dust, dirt, oil smudges, these are all infamous old enemies of the photographer. Keeping your lenses clean is essential for making images sharp, legible, and free from distractions. Lens wipes and cleaning cloths can save you hours of valuable time in post. Not having enough batteries or memory cards on you. So you find yourself in a situation where your only battery runs dry or you fill up your only memory card. Not having spare cards and batteries can mean the end of your day of shooting. Or worse, if you're on a job, a very angry client and a lot of embarrassment. Have spares to ensure a smooth, continuous shooting day, worry-free. Not adjusting your focus point. Most photographers find the center point the sweet spot for focusing on an image. But not all images have the subject in the middle of the frame. Now you could focus and recompose, but doing so may not guarantee a sharp image. Moving the focus point to where your subject is solves this issue. Shooting in full auto or the wrong mode. Shooting in full auto mode is great for shooting straight away, but as you develop as a photographer, manual control of aperture, shutter speed, and ISO can help fully realize your vision. If you're making the move from full auto, try using aperture or shutter priority modes. Aperture priority mode does exactly what it sounds like. Lets you choose your aperture while the camera adjusts the shutter speed to make a proper exposure. Aperture priority is especially useful when you'd like to control the depth of field in your photos. So whether you want a shallow depth of field for a portrait or a deep depth of field for landscapes, aperture priority allows you to set the desired aperture and depth based on your aesthetic. You can still set the ISO sensitivity, which will affect what shutter speed the camera sets indirectly. If you're shooting action or sports, setting your camera in shutter priority will let you control the exposure of your photograph to freeze or blur a moving subject. Just like in aperture priority mode, you'll have the ability to change the ISO, and this will affect what aperture the camera thinks is right for an exposure. Learning how to use the manual camera mode gives you complete control over the image making process. You, the photographer, make all of the decisions. Depth of field, exposure time, light sensitivity, whether simple or complex, mastery of manual photography is paramount to executing your vision. Don't use auto white balance. In some situations, auto white balance can be a great help, especially in mixed lighting scenarios. But there are times when the feature gets it wrong. Landscapes where white snow turns blue or even gray. Using color temperature presets is a good starting place, but setting a custom white balance offers even finer control. Of course, if you shoot in RAW, it's possible that you can adjust your white balance in post, but why not get it right in camera? Not shooting in RAW. So speaking of shooting in RAW, this gives you the finest control over your images in post. If your white balance is off, or if you had some exposure issues, the uncompressed information in a RAW file allows for adjustments that just can't be done with JPEG files. Not exposing properly. Achieving a good exposure means not losing any of the detail in the darkest and brightest parts of the image. Now, while some objects like the sun will always appear bright, you shouldn't blow out your sky or a subject's skin. Likewise, you don't want to underexpose your subject and lose important information in the shadow details. Use your camera's light meter to get a good idea of where your exposure lies. Sometimes, for scenes where there's a big difference between the highlights and the shadow details, you can underexpose the shot to save the highlights, and then in post, boost your shadows to help balance the image. Blown highlights can lose all of their detail, where something that's underexposed is more likely to be recoverable in post. Exposure compensation is a helpful tool that will allow you to purposefully underexpose or overexpose your image based on the scenario. For instance, if your camera isn't getting an accurate reading of what the exposure in the scene is really about, like if you're shooting in snow, you can use compensation to help make a better photograph. So those are some of the things from our list, but what are some of the wrong things that you've seen out there? Let us know in the comments below. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe. I'm photographer David Flores. See you next time. Wrong.
wrong. Wrong! You're doing it wrong! Wrong! Hey, don't do that! That's wrong! <laughs>